So, uh, on set theory, guys, uh, yeah, what to be looking into is just uh, the basic uh, of set theory. It's just the basic, nothing more. So, yeah, uh, for a set definition, uh, a set is a any well-defined collection of objects. Just a collection of objects. That's our set. So definition, the elements of a set are the objects in a set. When are referring to elements, we are referring to the objects in a set. So usually we denote uh, sets with uppercase letters, elements with the lowercase letters. Just like that. Whenever you want to present, uh, to write your set, you have to use capital letter just for its name. And then for the elements, you have to use a small letter, just like that. I'm trying to add someone here. And true. Andrew, can you switch off your mic? So that's all about uh, a definition of a set. So guys, just to follow up with me, you can open the, the slide that I have shared with you. Uh, I'm on slide number two. So we say X is an element of A using that symbol, the symbol there in that slide, which means that X is an element of A, and for X is not an element of A, you put something like an epsilon and then with a slash, that's uh, the symbol that you'll be using. And then uh, for ways of describing sets, ways of describing sets, Said that you can use the roster method. The roster method, uh, which will list the elements, is uh, in curly brackets. That method, where you put your, all your elements inside a curly bracket, and uh, after each and every element, you put a comma. Also, you can use the set builder notation. With this one, uh, characterize all those elements in the set by stating the property or properties they must have to be members. You will be using a definition of set members. For example, you can say X is such that uh, X is an odd uh, positive integers less than 10. Just like that, you'll be using the descriptive part of those uh, objects. So there's also the descriptive form. This one is given a uh, verbal, which is a verbal description. Where you can just state that like A is the set of all integers from one to six inclusive. Just like that, let me try to add uh, other people here who are requesting to be added. So on common sets, uh, common sets, we've got the common sets of numbers. We've got the natural numbers. We've got a, uh, the set of integers, we've got the complex numbers, we've got the real numbers, we've got the rational numbers. Uh, this set of numbers, they are mostly used in this topic of set theory. So you have to know them uh, by their definition. Maybe you can be given uh, your set in a descriptive manner where you have to know what a, nat a, what a natural number is and what are integers, and what are rational numbers. 
and what are your numbers? So you have to know them. Uh, I've got some special sets. I've got uh, the now set or uh, empty set. This is a set with no elements, often symbolized by a phi, a phi symbol. Just a circle with a, a slash on top of it, or just the empty curly brackets. That's your empty set. It's a set with no elements. Also, there's the universal set. This is the set of all elements currently under consideration and is often symbolized by a U. That's your universal set. It will be a set of all elements under consideration. And then uh, let's talk about the membership relationships. Uh, we've got what we call a subset. You can say A is a subset of B. Uh, if the elements in A are also part of the elements in B. So we say A is a subset of B. If X is an element of A and X is also an element of what? Of B. That is all the members of A are also members of B. The notation for subset is very similar to the notation for less than or equal to, and it means in terms of the sets included in or equal to. That's all about a subset. Uh, so if there's anyone raising any hand, I'm sure I will be not able to see it because I'm actually on my PowerPoint. But Tim, are you actually able to see something now? Uh, no. Uh, okay. I'm not seeing anything. I think I've got a problem with the software. Maybe if I actually joined using browser, maybe it was going to be okay. through. But anyway, I hope you are following me up with the, the one that I've sent you in our group. Yes, sir. I'm using okay. the, the slide you sent on the group. It's okay. So I'm on slide number six. And, uh, we are following, sir, but uh, we are just following on the, we are also on slide number six, but we are right. not seeing anything other than that. Ah, it's fine. So, membership relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Let's talk about the proper subset. There is a subset and there is a proper subset. So if we say A is a proper subset of B. Um, if all the members of A are also members of B, but in addition, they exist at least one element C, such that C is an element of B, but C is not an element of A. So the notation for subset is very similar to the notation for less than and means in terms of the sets included in but not equal to. Here what we are saying is just uh, A will contain some elements which are part of uh, set B, but there will be some of the elements which will be not uh, actually part of A. That's all about a proper subset. We are not taking uh, the whole subset, uh, the whole set of B, but we are just taking some elements in B and put them in A. That's all about a proper subset. So, I don't know, Robert, if you have raised your hand, I don't know if there is any issue. I just want to ask you, sir. Eh? So, it means what a young arm cut my beer. This is a Venn diagram, bye bye. Eh? Okay. For a subset, yeah, an engram katima b, but arm katima b daruga pani mang my elements and engram katima b and engasrum katima a. All right, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, there are some elements which are not in a, but which are in b. Uh, I think you can switch off your mic now. Okay, so. Now uh, let's move sorry, on. Say, uh -huh. Sorry, say. 
Yep. If you can give a clarity on issue of proper subset, proper subset, if you can repeat for us, because I didn't understand. Honestly. It's fine. What I'm saying, you are saying, uh, for a proper subset, uh, A is a proper subset of B. If all the members of A are also members of B, but in addition, there exists at least one element, C, such that C is an element of B, but C is not an, an element of A. What we are just saying is the elements in A are also in B, but there are some elements which are not A in A, but which are in what? In B. At the end, A will be a subset of B then that subset of B is a proper subset. I don't know if you get it. Yeah, understood, say, understood. All right, it's OK. So let's move on, on to finite and infinite sets. Uh, a set S is said to be finite if it contains exactly M distinct elements. Sorry. Um, a set is, is said to be finite if it contains exactly M distinct uh, elements, where M denotes some non-negative integer. What we are saying here, for a set to be uh, finite, uh, we will be able to tell the exactly number of elements in that set. That's a finite uh, set. So you can actually be able to find the number of elements in that set. Uh, there is a caller here. It's okay. I would I will attend to to a later. So that's a finite word. That's a finite set. For an infinite set, a set is said to be infinite if it is not a finite. If we cannot obtain the maximum number of elements in that set, that set is infinite. For example, the set is of letters of English alphabets is finite because the number of elements in that set is 26. We have got 26 English alphabet letters. And then the set of positive integers is infinite because you can count from one, two, three, up to infinite. That's an infinite set. So let's go on, let's move on to equal sets. When we say sets are equal, uh sorry let me just take this one. i think there's something Can we, can we switch off our mic and uh, our camera? Uh, Trinos, Nyon, I saw you've raised your hand. Is there any question? Trinos, Nyon, is there any question? It's OK. Let's move on. Uh, we're on equal sets. So two sets are equal if and only if they have the same elements. Two sets are equal if and only if they have the same elements. We only say sets are equal if set A has got the same and exact elements as set B, but the order uh, we do not consider the order. So therefore, if A and B are sets, then A and B are equal if and only if uh, they exist O of X, where X is an element of A, which implies that X is an element of B, vice versa. If X is an element of B, also X is an element of what? Of A. So we write A is equal to B if A and B are equal sets. That's when we only write that A is equal to B. 
For example, the sets 1, 2, 5 and 2, 5, 1 are equal because they have the same elements. So the order in which the elements of, set, of a set are listed does not matter. Also, it does not matter if any element of a set listed more than once. In uh, so one triple two a uh, quad five is the same as the set one two five because they have the same elements. So once the the set have got the same elements, we conclude that uh, those sets are equal. I don't know if there is any question there. I think I can move on. I'll say just sorry. Thanks. What's the meaning of that tree upside the A? Upside Ups down A. Upside what A? Okay, that one I think uh, when you are doing predicates and the uh, yeah, predicates, I think you understand that it's for all. It's just uh, a, a way or a notation to write for all x yeah okay then, understood okay so let's move on to venn diagrams uh in venn diagrams the universal set to you uh let's just start by uh defining a venn diagram so sets can be represented graphically using venn diagrams it's a graphical way or a graphical representation of a set. Uh, so it was named after the English mathematician John Venn. So in Venn diagrams, the universal set U, which contains all the objects under consideration, is represented by a rectangle. So that rectangle, I think is basically, this information is basically to everyone. So that rectangle is your universal set, which will be representing the u the universal set the universal set so inside this rectangle there are circles or other geometrical figures are used to represent sets sometimes the points are used to represent the particular elements of the set so sometimes uh, also venn diagrams are often used to indicate the relationships between sets was in just one Venn diagram, you can have more than two. Yeah, uh, you can have more than one uh, sets where all those sets can have a relationship of union, intersection, uh, complement, or so. So let's go on to power set. If you are given a set S. The power set of, of S is the set of all subsets of the set S. So just a power set, just a set of all subsets of what? Of S. So the power set of S uh, is denoted by P of S, like we're writing it as a function, a function of S, which will be P of S. For example, and also you have to know that an empty set is also a part of of a subset of subsets of a set. So, for example, we've got an example which is saying what is the power set of the set uh, with element with elements zero, one, two. So the solution will be the all these subsets of that set. So subsets of 0, 1, 2, firstly, it will be the first, it will be the empty set. And then followed by a zero, followed by a set with the only one, followed by a set with only two, and then a set with the 0, 1, and a set with the 0, 2, with the 1, 2, and also the set itself. So you have to know that a power set, we will have a, the set itself and the empty set and the other subsets 
which means that an empty set is a subset of any set and the set itself is a subset of itself you have to know that and then uh, let's move to cartesian products if we do not have any question to so cartesian product okay brandon you can ask um, so you just want to find out with the share screen about I am trying to share the screen, but I've got a challenge there. So you can you can use the slide that I've sent in a, in our main group. Wow, okay. thank you, sir. Okay. I don't know. Am I appearing as a guest to you on the meeting? Maybe that's where there is a problem there. No, I'm a, you are not a guest. I, I'm not a guest. Yes. Uh, so I don't know why. There are some problems. I'll try. Let me try to share again. I don't know. You have a question? Uh, you can ask. I'm not asking about the, the, the power seat. I can't ask about, about the formula whereby they say PS in power seat that the formula yes. is equal to power N. Is it correct? P say, PS is the what? To the power of what? Of N. Yes. Power N, yes. Oh. The formula. Okay, N. that one. Uh, let's try to confirm it. You've got what? Three elements. And then. Uh, if we say that set to the power to the power three, that formula, what you will be trying, maybe we'll be trying to find the number of subsets that you must have. So, so it will be true. So which is which? Yeah. You. Which is which? I'm sure you have to go through that formula. I'm sure it will be try to find you the total number of subsets. The total number of subsets for that because the power set is actually the set of all subsets, not the total number of subsets. Okay. If you so get I, me correct. So this way. What you are seeing here on your slides, this one is the yeah. workout, and that one is yeah. the. Okay. That one is the result, or that one is the answer of a, of a power set. I don't know if you get it. If you are being asked to find the power set of a set, you f you have to find the set of all subsets of that set which means you have a one set but that set will be containing some sets within it and those sets will be uh the subsets of that set yeah i've proven it and yeah on the end p what i thought yeah. content the set i did the formula for p it was to two yes. because the number of elements Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what I said. It will be trying to find you the total number of subsets that you must have. So it's true to the power to the power n, where n is what is the number of elements that you have in that set. So it actually not give you the answer to the question. If you are being asked to give a power set, that formula will not give you the answer. What it will give you is the hint of the total number of sets that you must come up with. It guides you. Yes, it guides you. Something like that. Okay. Okay. So let's go on to Cartesian products. I'm trying to share my screen, but uh, without any luck. Maybe it's the application that I'm using, I don't know. Because the last time I was using the website. So I don't know. 
Okay. Appreciate the whole screen. Okay. So on Cartesian products, let A and B uh, B sets. Uh, the Cartesian product of A and B denoted by A cross B, A times B, but it's normally called A cross B, uh, is the set of all ordered pairs A, B, where A is element of A and B is element of B. So what you'll be doing here, uh, it's uh, A cross B will be equal to A, B, where A, such that A is an element of A and B is an element of B. What you'll be doing here, you'll be taking the elements in A and the elements of B, in B, and then you put them together. Uh, you put them together in one, uh, in one set. So here, yeah, what is the Cartesian product of A and B? You'll be just doing what you'll be doing when you expand brackets in algebra. It's almost the same. Where you'll be saying one times A, one times B, one times C. But the only thing you'll be putting them in what? In brackets. Not curly brackets, but those rounded brackets. But the first element will be of the first set, which is A cross B. So the first element will be always from what? From A, and then the second element will be always from B. So for example, here I've got a set A with the elements 1, 2, and set B with the elements A, B, C. So the Cartesian product A cross B excuse me, will be uh, 1A followed by 1B, the order doesn't matter, and then 1C, and then you go on to 2A, 2B, 2C, just like that. So note that the Cartesian products A cross B and B cross A are not equal, unless if A is an empty set and B is an empty set. That's where A cross B and B cross A will be equal. Since if A is an empty set and B is an empty set, A will be equal to B. So A cross B and B cross A will be equal. Otherwise, A cross B and B cross A are not equal. So what if, if you are given three sets? where you'll be asked, asked to do a Cartesian product of A, B, and C. We just do the same, but here um, you have to take the first element in A and then multiply it or uh, multiply it with the, the elements, with the first element in B and C, then followed by the second element in B and C, uh, and you do the same until you finish the elements in set A. So the Cartesian product of A, B, and C consists of all ordered triples A, B, C, where A is element of A, B is an element of B, and C is an element of C. Don't know, is there anyone? Okay. I think, are you able to, to see my screen here? Are you seeing something? Yeah, I am seeing uh -huh. some, something here. Yeah, but is, 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 is it? Is it mine? No, I, I, I'm trying to share for you, say, maybe. Since you are saying okay. you are facing challenges, yes. Okay, thank so you for I, that. I, so so I'll maybe just... you have, you have to move on to slide number 14. Slide number 14. We're supposed to do that earlier. <laughs> okay, thank you. Slide number 14. Mm, yes. 
I think there, but I don't know what happened. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, what you are saying, uh, it will be zero in A by one in B by zero in C. Then go on to zero by one in B by uh, one in C. Then you have to go zero by one, then by two in C. After you do that for all the elements in C, you have actually firstly you, you consider the first element in A and the first element in B, and then the first and the second and the third in what in C, and then you go on to do it for what for the first element in A and then for the second element in B with the rest of the elements in C, where you'll be zero by one by zero, uh, sorry, zero by, by two by zero, zero by two by one, zero by two by two. And then you go on to the next element in, in A, where you'll be doing for one by one by zero, one by one, by one, one by one, by two, and then one by one, uh, one by one, by two. And then after that, you switch to the next element in B, and then you do it with the rest of elements in C, which will be one by two, by zero, one by two, by one, one by two, by two. And that will be the, the Cartesian product of A cross B cross C. I think if you try to follow the logic, it will be easier for you. I don't know if there is any question on, on that. Okay, I think we can move on to... I think we can move on to the... Next slide, slide number 15. Set operations. On set operations. Ah, uh, where's this slide? If you actually see something, Tim. Yes, I'm seeing it here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Ah, it's really. okay. So, oh, if I sudden, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. So, on set operations. Two or more sets can be combined in many different ways. For instance, starting with the set of mathematics majors at your school and the set of computer, ma uh, computer science majors at your school, we can form the set of students who uh, are mathematics majors or computer science majors. The set of students who are joint majors in mathematics and computer science. The set of all students not majoring in mathematics. So you can actually combine uh, sets in a different ways. So here we can use this, this one, which is the set union, where we say a union B is the set, uh, which is the set of all elements that are in A or B or both. So a union B, you have to take the elements in A and the elements of in B, and you combine them. Whether they are in A and not in B, all the elements in A and in B. That's the set union. So an element X belongs to the union of the sets A and B if and only if X belongs to A or X belongs to B. So on a Venn diagram, it will be presented by the set A and B, all of them being shaded. So it is just like the logical or operator if you are doing gates or so. So examples of the set union. The union of sets are 135 and 123 is the set 1235. That is 135 union 123. 
So the union of the set of all computer science majors at your school and the set of all mathematical majors at your school is the set of students at your school who are majoring either in mathematics or in computer science. I don't know if there is any question here. I think I can move on to the next slide. Uh, on slide number 18. So we are talking of an intersection. Let me try to add someone here. On intersection here. So A intersect A intersect B is the set of all elements that are in both A and B. And they are denoted by A intersecting B with that the U, which is turned upside down. An element X belongs to the intersection of, of the sets A and B if and only if X belongs to A and X belongs to B. All the elements in A and B are the elements which you, which you fall under A intersecting B. So the shaded region represents the intersection of A and B. This, this is similar to the logical end. So there's a note here which says the two sets are called disjoint if their intersection is the empty set. Like if A intersection B is an empty set, they are disjoint. Even if you draw them, they cannot intersect. They cannot cross each other. Something like that. So let's talk about the set complement. A complement or not A is the set of all elements in the universal set but not in A, which is denoted by A bar. It can be denoted by A bar or you can use the A to the power C as a complement. Uh, and also you have to note that those elements must be in the universal set but not in A. That's a complement. So an element belongs to A complement if and only if X is not an element of A. That is for, that is X must be the element of the universal set, but not in A. As a Venn diagram, you will be shading the part which is outside that set or that given set. There is an example which is attached to this slide I think uh, which is saying let A be the, it's a set of vowels where the universal set is the set of letters of the English alphabet. So then A complement will be other uh, alphabet letters, but which are not vowels, which means which is not A, E, I, O, U. So the complement operator is similar to the logical note and is not reflexive. That is A bar. Uh, if we say A complement, complement will be equal to the set itself. Then let's go to the set difference. Uh, on set difference, the a minus B is the set of elements that are in A with those that are in B subtracted out. If we say A minus B, you want the elements in A but not in B, which means you are excluding the elements in B and the, its intersect and their intersection. So another way of putting it is a uh, uh, it is the set of elements that are in A but not in B. So A minus B will be equal to A intersecting B complement. The number uh, which will be the elements in A but not in B. So the difference of sets A and B is sometimes denoted by A with that backward slash then B. Any question? Okay, I think we'll move on to symmetric difference. On symmetric difference, if you are given two sets, 
Their symmetric difference is the set of elements that belong to either one or one or the other set, but not both. Which means here we'll be focusing on elements in A and in B, but not their intersection. That's the symmetric difference. Uh, and it can be uh, written using the that sign a plus with any circle. So it can be ex, ex, uh, it can be expressed also in the following way, mm -hmm. we, which is a union B minus their intersection minus a intersecting B, which can be also a minus B union B minus A. So here is a is an example which you be using universal set with one two three four five six as its elements and a with one two three and b with three four five six. So a intersecting b you have to find the elements in a and b which is three. And then a and b you have to find the uh, we have to find the elements in a or b and then put them together that's the union which means it will it will be one two three four five six and you have to know that whenever you are writing a union you don't need to repeat the numbers you don't know you don't need to repeat the elements like writing uh one two three three uh four five six you have to just write the element once and then b minus a you have to take the, the elements in a b but not in a mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can we switch off our mic okay thank you so uh, a, a b minus a is the are the elements in a b but not in a so elements in a b is three four five six but they must not be in a which means three will be not part of this answer so it will be four five six and then a minus b are the elements in a but not in a b which means uh there is one there is two there is three and then b there's what there's three there's four there's five there's six and then a minus b elements in a but not in b which means here we've got a one and a two two are supposed to be part of the answer there was uh two is not in b but is in a and also in the universal set so you have to correct the answer is that answer and then b complement are the elements in the universal set but not in b which means are other elements which are not three four five six which is one and two and then uh the symmetric difference of a and b are the elements in A and in B, but not those which are on their on its intersection, which means you only have to find that the intersection and in the and then you remove the intersection of A and B and then you take the the remaining elements. So A, A intersecting B is what is three. So you have to remove that three and then you take the rest, which means you take one, two, and four, five, six. So I think uh, that's all. And then there is a practice question, which yeah, will be uh, yes. You can ask. So, number five. So what? You can ask. All right. Want to clarify? So on number six, one, two, four, five, six uh, is the symmetric difference of A and B. You can one, two, four, five. Yeah, is, is is the symmetric difference of A and B. 
what we've done there is just to check out the intersection and then we take the elements in A and B. If you go to the definition of uh, A, of the, say, of the symmetric difference of A and B, you find out that uh, these are the elements in A and in B, but we have to take out the, word, the intersection. I don't know if you get it. Yeah, I understood. Yeah. I don't know if there is any is there any other question? Yes. We can go. The question on. Let's say and you are given that AT so one, two, three, and yes. And and B is three, four, five, six. Let's mm -hmm. say B this are the same. So here number number five will include the seven. If what? You, you can ask yes, again. Okay. Since A got one, two, three elements, right? And B is three, four, five, six. Let's say the universal set got seven. So number yes. five. Okay. On the set difference. You don't need to put a seven because seven is not part of A and part of B. Okay. Yeah, if you look on the maybe the one we're sharing the, the screen, you can go back to slide number 21. Slide number 21. Yeah, if you look at the Venn diagram, the part which is B, which is shaded, is the set A and set B, but excluding its intersection, but not in the universal set again. So these are elements in A, also in B, but not their intersection. We are actually dealing with A and B, not the universal set. Okay. I don't know if there is any question here. So I think uh, you can, as for practice, you can do that uh, practice problems where there is set A and set B and you are being required to find A and B, A intersecting B, set difference of A, B, B minus A, and also the Cartesian product A cross B. You can do the rest of the problems, I think, on your own where you'll be trying to find the answers or so. There are other practice problems here where you, where you are asked to draw the Venn diagrams for each of the, of the combination of the sets A, B, C. Uh, also, guys, you must be able to, to draw a Venn diagram from given uh, statements like these ones. A intersecting B, uh, by B union C. You have to show it by shading the required region. You must be able to shade the part which is A intersecting B union C, which is uh, firstly, you have to take on B union C button the set again, A in a, a, a B in a U. And then you find the elements which are in B, which will be in B and C, and then, which are also as part of A. So if you draw your three sets, the part that you'll be taking, I think is the central part, which involve all the elements in A, B, and C. Was the, uh, I also you have to shade the part uh, almost, all the intersection, you have to shade all the intersection there, but not the B intersecting U C. You have to leave the B intersecting C part, because here we only need the elements in A, also in what? In B and C. I think you can try to play around all those things. 
on your own. I think it's not that much hard. So for this presentation, I think that's all team. Thank you for being here. But also those uh, people who will be supposed to present, please make sure uh, you will be around when you are asked to. Because we schedule these meetings in time. Maybe two days, three days before. A group of 20 must have someone to present. For So I want to say thank you for those who, may, who actually make it. Thank you, sir. Uh, I say have a good day. Thank you, okay. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Brendan, you, do you have something thank to you, say? Sir. Yes, I have a question, sir. Okay, you can ask. All right, uh, so my question is to my presentations are uh, how are they grouped? And how do you know to group up with a presentation in time? Oh, okay. Uh, they are group they are group leaders for group one up to group eight and they've actually created uh they are uh, they have actually created their whatsapp groups also so what you need is just a link from one of their members or from the group leader and then you will join that group it Earlier, we, 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 you were actually supposed to be a group of 20, but now I said since I have got many students, even if, group, if, even if a group have got 20 people, you can actually join it, and then they will put your name on it. And so it's a matter of finding the group leaders. I will, I will share the list of group leaders in our WhatsApp group. So that you can contact them. Oh, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Just have a good day. Okay, thank you, sir. Same to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir.